We're talking books now. My absolute favorite topic looking at the state of the publishing industry in South Africa, our reading patterns, and why we don't seem to be buying enough books. I'm talking to Terry Morris, who's MD of Pan Macmillan. Thank you so much, Terry, for your time uh, today. The perception that I get, and I think most South Africans get, is that we just don't read. Is this true? Do the numbers reflect this? <laughs> Sadly, they do. I wish I had a better story to tell, mm. but um, but no. Given the, the size of our market and population, uh, the book uh, sales are, are dismally low, and and it, it's a very complicated situation. And there are layers um, that that contribute to that mm. uh, picture. What what are some of the highlights? Why is it that we don't? Why do you think we're not doing it? Um, so I, th I think there are a number of factors, and let's start in the schools. So mm. twenty percent of schools have libraries or have access to books. So these are children who don't grow up with books uh, in their homes necessarily, not no books in, in, in the classrooms. And so um, y we have kids who don't uh, start off with a reading culture or a culture of, mm. of, of love of literature or books. Um, our libraries, uh, some are functional, some are wonderful, run by, by very dedicated librarians, but uh, on the whole, quite sad state of affairs um, there's not a lot of new material coming in all the time they're not open uh, in the evenings on weekends when people uh, want to be accessing and also not promoting and, and uh, pushing enough uh, local literature yeah. and, and local so th that's that's on a, on a bigger scale uh, we have uh, a lot of books in this market are imported uh, so when we have a weak rand it's it, it, it contributes Price to the high price of, of yeah. books uh, because we have small uh, reading culture, the price of a print, uh, you know, we, we print smaller print runs, which mm. uh, pushes up the costs. Um, and just generally, South Africans, I, th I think that's, that's the structural issue. And then just generally coming into a modern era where children and adults are, um, uh, they, they don't have a lot of time. You know, you're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, uh, social media is eating into, into our time a lot. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, and, and what is the, the size of the local public? industry? Well, so there are three main uh, sectors in there. The, the largest sector is the education market. They're producing textbooks for the market. Okay. Their size is roughly about um, uh, close to two billion, but it really depends um, if there's a curriculum development year okay. happening. Uh, then we have uh, an ac the academic sector. And then the trade sector, which is books you'd find um, in, in book uh, shops, uh, in libraries, uh, that is uh, about 800 million. Brand. Okay. And of that, uh, about 230 million is our religious books. So that's uh, so wow. that is thriving. <laughs> There's sectors of, of the market that are thriving. That's interesting. So are we more a non-fiction nation or a fiction nation? Definitely more non-fiction. Yeah. And um, I, I think people are fascinated on a local publishing level. People are fascinated by where we are, where we come from, uh, where we're going to. So current affairs and politics uh, do very well. People are always looking for the answer. <laughs> How are we going to get there? Where do you, you know? Where did we come from? And um, children's books are, are are doing well. I think there is a, a an understanding that that the more we can um, give our children resource-wise, okay. um, you know, the better for them long term. And um, South African fiction is not very well supported in this yeah, country. Yeah, that's very interesting because I I, I prefer fiction. I know mm. I'm a journalist, and I'm, and I'm supposed to say I love reading political books and biographies, but actually I like to escape my work <laughs> once in a while. Um, but how how so how do local um, fiction writers then survive? Do they survive on the international circuit? How, how does it work? Well, most of them have a day job, and um, writing happens uh, in the evening or the wee hours of the morning. Sadly for them, uh, it's it's a it's a conundrum for us as publishers. You have the very mass market authors like a Dion Mayer, mm. uh, who who does extremely well. Yeah. He's wonderful, and he can be a full time writer. He's supported um, in the, on the Afrikaans side, and Afrikaans fiction is thriving. Mm. But local fiction, a really tough market, especially literary fiction. I think people often read uh, fiction for escapism. Yeah. And so there's this sense of the other, finding out about the other, reading books from uh, India or, uh, you know, these exotic, new, different places to yeah. take you away from, away from, from where we are. Mm. Um, uh, which is a pity because we have some amazing, wonderful local fiction. That is very interesting. <laughs> I do, I do. I love and more and more and more fiction. <laughs> are we seeing new emerging writers uh, um, in South Africa? What, 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 what is your sense? Definitely uh, a lot of new emerging writers 
uh, sadly, the, a lot of the fiction gets subsidized by the non-fiction sales. But that being said, the big publishers are still publishing fiction, not, I not enough, um, and that's a, a purely economic um, decision. Um, and this is really where I think there could be partnerships with government uh, on many levels, you know, where writers could get a tax break as they do in Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, where we could uh, get guarantees from libraries that they would support local books and local fiction. W um, wasn't there a movement to try and um, make sure that books were zero rated for VAT, so um, that we would take that kind of tax mm. away? And do you think that that would make a difference? That argument pops up again and again, and of course I'd love to see books zero rated. I think the main argument from um, revenue services, which I understand to a degree, is that the, the bulk of books buying in this country is actually government on textbooks. And mm. so I in a way, it's, it's a zero sum game because uh, they're paying tax and then sort of collecting the tax. So um, I, I think, uh, I think that lobby's died down. What I, where I'd rather s uh, prefer to spend time is getting the South African Book Development Council or, or Book Development and Literacy and sort of uh, placed yeah. in the centre of government, in the, in the centre of the, of the Arts and Culture Department, working yeah. with DBE, um, uh, higher education. So in the right. way that we support, for example, the, the music industry with music mm. festivals and so on, yeah. we could then plough maybe the same energy and the same kind of resources mm. uh, into the books, but how do you get it interesting? Because as you say, reading is a culture. I've been reading since I was four years old. I grew up in a home where there were books around me. Mm. So it was natural for me. So I can't judge somebody who did not grow up around books, um, to who doesn't, who now mm. prefers to not read and rather be on Mixit and Facebook and, and Twitter. Uh, how do we make it a, you know, a ubiquitous thing? It's, it really does start in the schools and it starts by hooking in those kids and reading to children at night and starting these sort of grassroots, I hate the word, but grassroots movements around South Africa of, you know, making sure there are books in homes, but also books that are relevant. And mm. I think that's um, another issue is that books in um, I people's home languages, yeah. um, also books that, that, that where children are reflected back at themselves in the pages, um, not just these imported books which are wonderful and have their place, mm. uh, but also to make sure that there's a, that there's a writing industry, an illustrator's industry, and really it starts with the kids because those kids then grow up to become readers. Okay. Um, there, there are amazing initiatives happening on, on a smaller scale, but really we need a kind of joined up yeah, because um, I was going to ask campaign. if we've left this to civil society. So we've got a lot of literacy trusts. I'm actually part mm. of one uh, FUNZA that mm. tries to get yeah. books into schools um, and fiction mm. to get literacy levels mm. up. But have we left this purely to the civil society um, segment of our society rather than um, government and corporate? I, I definitely think so, and um, I know that the South African Book Development Council has a, um, a proposal sitting on, uh, I think it's sitting with DAC at the moment, to become a statutory body where yeah. there would be money flowing through um, every year. And sadly, that has not been um, approved. I think it's been th now through four ministers um, and, and still sitting languishing there. I think, um, I think it's absolutely critical that there's work between government departments. In India, the Book Development um, Council sits in the presidency. Mm -hmm. That's how seriously they take it. Um, and, and so I think, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not just laying the blame at government's door. There needs to be pressure applied. There needs to be a, a kind of a joined up campaign. But I do think we've left it um, to these tiny little NGOs, which are doing incredible, wonderful things, but they're constrained. If we were to get this right, what would be the potential of the South African publishing industry? Enormous. I mean, in this country, when you do well with a book, uh, but anywhere between three and five thousand is considered a bestseller these days. Wow. Which is which is tiny. And so, you know, you start doubling that, you start uh, tripling that, the price of books comes down, you get support from retail, not just booksellers, but other retailers see the potential in books. Um, and slowly, you know, it really starts building. Right, we'll leave it there. Thanks for your time okay. today. That is uh, Terry Morris, who is the MD of Pan McMillan.